Okay, we have a um, you know incredible last couple of dynamites uh, for the month of July. You know, uh, you know, coming off of Forbidden Door, they gave us Beach Break, which was one of the best dynamites of the year, and then we followed up with even more dynamite specials. Uh, first one I want to talk about is the Owen Hart's Finals uh, from Calgary. Uh, so just like last year, you know, Calgary got another great show. Um, they kick off the dynamite with Brian Danielson and Hangman Page. This is actually the finals for the Owen Hart's, for the Owen Hart Cup. We actually had Jeff Jarrett as a special uh, enforcer for this particular match. Uh, so the winner, you know, goes to Wembley, goes to all in. So uh, big dynamite. I, I thought this was a big time match. Um, you know, this is really AEW's version of the Royal Rumble. If you look at it in terms of, uh, you know, all in being the biggest show of the year. Uh, so Brian Danielson goes over Hangman Page. Very unpredictable match. I thought this was unpredictable for two reasons. Because, you know, when they announced that Hangman came back against Jared, I, I really thought, you know, it was a possibility they might go back to Hangman and Swerve. You know, that was such a great feud. You know, match of the year at full gear, some people think. Um, you know, they never wrestled for the championship. So I, I wouldn't have ruled that out. And then at the same time, like Jared being a part of the match was... Just kind of weird. I know he's a big time babyface because of, uh, you know, the Owen stuff and they're in Calgary. But, you know, anytime Jared, uh, you know, enters the match as a referee, you know, he's such a traditional natural heel that I was like, man, he's going to turn on Danielson. Uh, the turn never came. Uh, Danielson goes over. Uh, you know, the important thing is it's, it's a phenomenal match between Danielson and Hangman. Uh, another great match between them. Um, I, I mean, when you look back on it, and Danielson and AEW so far, his his best series of matches is got to be against Hangman. You could argue that they had the match of the year at Winter is Coming in 2021. And then, you know, shockingly, in 2022, the first, you know, Dynamite on TBS in January, uh, that ended up being my match of the year, which shocked the shit out of me by the time he got to the end of the year. And, you know, they even, they even had other matches. I think they wrestled in the tournament after Punk got hurt. You know, leading up to Grand Slam. So this might have been like their fourth, fifth match. Uh, still really, really good stuff. I, I would definitely say this was weaker than the first two, but it's still a great match. It's still strong. You know, Hangman was a, you know, uh, he is a heel here. So that's what made it different. You know, Danielson got busted open. He's, he's ramming Danielson's head against the steel steps during the commercial break. And I just thought you had some great action here. Uh, you know, Danielson's uh, Bicycle knee kicks uh, came off great. He did that one spot that he did with Kenta where he actually ducks the, um, you know, the lariat from hand, the buckshot lariat. And he actually transitions into a roll up and then a bridge just like he did with Kenta. So uh, I love that spot. I, I love the ending, too. You know, Jarrett's in the ring and. Uh, you know, there's a ref bump. Uh, you know, Danielson's losing all the blood. Hangman starts doing the the hangman clutch. Uh, Danielson transitions into almost like a headlock, and then he gets leverage for the pin. So beautiful ending right there, outside the box ending. Uh, Danielson goes to Wembley to take on Swerve. Swerve then comes out and says, "This is going to be Danielson's final countdown." So, yeah, I mean, you know, when when you look at Wembley. You know, from a distance, like this is not a main event I would have expected at Wembley. I, I would, I was almost certain it was going to feature somebody like Osprey or, uh, you know, I thought maybe go back to MJF. I don't know. I, I really, you know, when I look at Swerve and Danielson, I, I say to myself, wow, you're going to go with two, you know, Washington State boys in the main event of a Wembley show. It, it's a little bit weird, but at the same time, you know, Danielson really... You know, if you remember, you know, the matches with Nigel, uh, specifically the one from Unified in in, uh, in England, Danielson, for as, as over as Nigel was in that match, Danielson got a lot of fan support in uh, in London, in, in England, Europe, where, wherever you want to call it. Obviously, they're going to be in London. And uh, yeah, the fans in the UK have tremendous respect for great wrestlers that aren't even from the UK, whether it be Brett, whether it be Danielson, whether it be Nigel. Uh, but hey, you know, Danielson versus Swerve, it's hey, it, it really is out of the box. I would not have expected. I didn't expect the Swerve to even hold the title this long. But now that we're getting it, I have no problem with it. Uh, you know, hopefully Danielson does win the belt. I mean, I, I think that will be awesome. You know, he wasn't at Wembley last year. So in some ways, it kind of makes up for, you know, not having him 
at uh, at All In uh, last year. You remember he actually made his return at All Out, you know, after the Punk situation. Uh, or so also on the show, you had Chris Jericho taking on Samoa Joe. This is a, um, a Stampede Street Fight non-title. Um, it was cool. There were some cool things about it. You know, Jericho actually has something different in the bag every time. This time it was actually horseshoes. Um, so I thought that was cool. Uh, th- you know, th- th- this ended up going, it ended up being a little bit wacky. I'm not going to say this is great. This might've been the first time ever you got Jericho and Joe, Joe Jericho would be a pretty cool name for a wrestler if they ever, uh, take that name. But I mean, first time ever Jericho in, in Samoa Joe, I, it, it felt like just a way to kind of write Joe off the of TV. But, you know, Jericho actually gets on the forklift after uh, Big Bill interfered and uh, just kind of rams Jericho. Uh, you know, Jericho just kind of rams Joe through a wall as the pallet is actually on the forklift. And then, uh, you know, of all people, Colt Cabana comes out. I guess Cabana is like a, a new coach in AEW right now. Uh, he's kind of yelling at Jericho. So uh, it, it it was cool for what it was. Um, but, uh, yeah, next next up, you actually had uh, Pac uh, def- defeating Claudio, uh, Kyle Fletcher, and uh, Tamahiro Ishii. This is number one contenders match for the international championship. So big match right here. Uh, Pac goes over. I, I think the match is really, really cool. They, they did some good stuff. Pac and Claudio did a double submission. You know, Ishii actually broke that up, and you know, Fletcher was pretty awesome. I mean, this. I mean, they didn't get any entrances, but you know, while this lasted, I thought it was uh, you know great stuff. But Pac does go over, and um, he's going to get a title shot at the international championship at All In. He said it's All In season, so I'm assuming that's definitely going to happen at All In. So as of right now, it's going to be Pac versus MJF at all in so i think that would be really really cool you know so Pac is going to get a big time match in his home country um yeah i mean we'll talk more about mjf and osprey later on but yeah really really surprising stuff but uh you could definitely look forward to that man i'm really happy that Pac is going to get rewarded for you know some of his great work recently and then we have the uh, finals here of the women uh when this got the main event i, I said to myself yeah it's kind of a you know, it's really not that appealing of a main event. I'm, I'm surprised this is going last. But once you see the show, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know why it went last. You, you got one of the best swerves and beatdowns and heel turns I think we've seen in years. And uh, I don't know. I just, for whatever reason, I didn't see this coming. Because after Mariah won this match, you know, she's celebrating with Tony in the ring. And um, so I just, they kind of... It's it's almost like the evolution stuff with Orton. Like they they tried to let the celebration sink in to the point where you know you almost want to ch- change the channel. Like that that's the key to a good swerve. Can you make people change the channel before the, before the swerve comes? That's how you know they get you. But um, yeah, I, I think Mariah and, and Willow was pretty damn good while it lasted. Like even after uh, Statlander and. Um, and Stokely, you know, came out in the hoodie and interfered. Like, Willow actually got some good offense in, and they, there was some nice back and forth at the end. But I think the match is going to be forgettable no matter how you look at it. It was still a good match. It was still really, really good. You know, uh, Mariah actually counters a almost like a version of a, um electric chair into a roll-up for the finish. And then she starts celebrating with Tony in the ring. They start hugging each other. You know, t- Tony basically points to the belt, and, you know, Mariah actually sprints to the Owen belt and the cup, and as soon as Tony gets to the platform, Mariah just swings at Tony, and uh, Mariah actually takes out Luther too. I think Luther actually got kicked off the stage through a table. I'm just like, whoa, what a way to end Dynamite, man! This is really, really good stuff. You know, Tony is bleeding like crazy. It looked like something from a horror movie, and Tony Tony Storm looked great with all that blood. She she looked like a movie star. With just how this was executed, but uh, but yeah, man, I like Mariah May. You got you got two. You know, girls from the UK in the main event at Wembley, this definitely feels like it's going to, you know, finally, you know, be a a big time Tony Storm match that I think everybody could look forward to. Uh, I'm not sure if, if, if this is paralleled to the movie that True Slayer was talking about. I know this whole storyline with the acting coach and everything is, is, is kind of inspired by a movie. Uh, but I like Mariah May. I think she's a good worker. Um, she's definitely like a hotter version of Tony Storm. So, uh, you know, thumbs up right there. Just just a nice little swerve. So that was the Dynamite from uh, another awesome show from Calgary. Um, you know, pretty much, 
I, I got to say, because this swerve is so good, I, I'm going to say it. Like, it, it was pretty much just as good as last year's show from Calgary, where you got that FTR classic, and you got you had David Benoit in the front row, and I, I think they ended the show with Punk and uh, Ricky Starks, which wasn't great, but, you know, that, that was a great show as well. But, yeah, n- another great show from Calgary. It was really tough to tell, like, if the fans in Calgary hated Jericho or not. Like, that's the one. It was really tough to kind of make that out. But other than that, man, uh, you know, Danison is going to all in. Uh, that's the important thing right there. You know, the celebration with Jared was definitely must see. And, and not to mention, Danderson was wearing, you know, pink, pink inspired, uh, you know, heart foundation tights to pay tribute to Owen. So a thumbs up right there. Just, you know, one of the best dynamites I think I've ever seen. So uh, definitely check it out. We're going to move on to uh, dynamite 250. Okay. So here we go. We got the big one. This is dynamite 250. You know, 25, 50, 75, 100, you know, those are considered milestones. So Dynamite 250 uh, gets a lot of promotion. This is actually from Little Rock, North Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, This was on July 17th, 2024. All right, so here's the big one. We got uh, MJF actually winning the international championship from Will Ospreay. They go two seconds short of an hour. I mean, MJF barely wins right before the time limit uh, expires. Holy shit. I I cannot believe that they went this long. So when you see the Osprey promo, um, you know, from Dynamite, uh, actually in Calgary, that's actually kicked off the show. Like MJF comes on the screen and he's he's digging at Osprey saying, you know, I don't have to kill myself in the ring. I don't wrestle for star ratings. So this was really a swerve. Like I did not expect this to go a whole hour. And uh, it was good, man. It was definitely good. I, I I wish I had seen this live. I wish I had seen um, this whole match live. I, I don't know if I would have appreciated it a lot. I probably would have loved it even more. I, I mean, I still enjoyed the match, but I, I think knowing that this was going to go a whole hour, uh, yeah, I think this is one of those things where you just needed to be there, you know, for the moment. But uh, not to take anything away from the match, though. Um, lots of drama. Osprey did some really, really good selling with the shoulder. I think they had to pop it back into place. So you definitely did some creative stuff there. MJF wrestled a very smart match. He, he he starts bragging about how smart he is. And then Osprey hits him with the hidden blade out of nowhere. So it, it too much good stuff to go over. Uh, I, I will say, like, man, like if I was watching this live for the first time, I, I think I would have said, wow, I, I can't believe how you know slow the pace is. It just didn't feel like a, a normal television match. But as the match progressed, you could definitely feel it within the crowd. Like they were, they felt like they were witnessing something special. Um, you know, so MJF does go over with the Dynamite Diamond. Uh, you know, the Tiger Driver 91 stuff came into play. Uh, it seems like Osprey is going to continue to, to, you know, debate with himself about to use it or not until I, I i think when osprey turns heel he'll finally start using it so it should be a pretty cool heel turn if osprey does turn heel and start do, using the tiger driver 91 so that kind of bites him in the ass mjf used it the dynamite diamond uh while the referee kind of doesn't really take a ref bump but the referee got hit for a, a second mjf is able to hit the dynamite diamond and win this match at, at at two seconds before the time limit expired. 60 minute time limit right here. So MJF wins the international championship and he's going to go with all in to take on Pac. You know, it'll be tough to build up MJF and Pac, uh, at least in the States. But I think by the time you get to Wembley, you know, the fans should be really, really hot to see Pac win that match. But, you know, the international championship, the continental championship, the TNT championships, I, I don't think you need to lose sleep over Osprey losing this match or this belt. It, it was definitely good. It was it was definitely a nice contrast of styles. Uh, once again, a pleasant surprise from MJF. The no sellings of the uh, Dragon Ranas was really, really cool as well. So, you know, if you could stay with this match long enough, I thought the, you know, the last 20 minutes were definitely exceptional. The whole match was really, really good, though. So uh, a nice little treat right there. AEW, um, you know, they do a really good job of, um, you know, presenting the, the, the one-hour matches. I mean, you've seen them in the past with, uh, you know, Danison and Hangman. So, you know, they do it again with MJF and Osprey. Th- this felt a little bit more unexpected. I think with Danielson and Hangman, you know, that that being the ch- having the championship on the line, um, I think you would have expected it there. This one just totally shocked. When I when I saw the length, I was just like, "What the fuck? You got to be kidding me!" But uh, definitely check it out. You know, the, the 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 rating here. 
oh my god, on a cage match. See, I, I don't really rate things over five stars, but l look at this rating, five and three quarter stars. Uh, see, Meltzer has fucked up the star rating system, but uh, man, we're going to move on. We got Mercedes Monet taking on Nyla Rose. I could not get into the match at all, but Mercedes goes over Nyla. Uh, also on the show, very, you know, because that match went an hour, you didn't have a lot here. Swerve actually takes on Okada. Um, you know, I was expecting a lot out of this. I thought this would be great. Uh, so this does get the main event, but, you know, nowhere near uh, hitting its potential. I, I just don't think the chemistry was great here. Okada just didn't look great. Uh for the most part here, I, I just think, you know, when, whenever Okada was not doing a drop kick, this this felt like it was a challenge. But, uh, you know, if they do ever go back to this, hopefully these two guys can have a much better match. But it really wasn't about the match at all. This is just all about setting up blood and guts. This leads to Darby coming out and joining Team AEW. So it was good, man. I mean, really, only thing to check out from this show is MJF and Osprey. It probably ended up being one of the best uh, dynamite matches of all time. It's definitely up there. I'm not going to say it's the best. Um, I, I still prefer, you know, Osprey's matches with Kenny and, and Brian Danielson and, and even Swerve over this. But in, in terms of MJF's matches, you know, besides the Danielson match, this this might be da uh, MJF's best match. So, uh, yeah, what a surprise, man! Awesome, awesome stuff right there. So that's uh, Dynamite 250. Um, before we move on to blood and guts, I, ju I just want to run down uh, Death Before Dishonor one more time. So, what, b I haven't seen Blood and Guts yet, but they're going to be doing Mark Briscoe and Roderick at Death Before Dishonor for the ROH title. So, just like last year, I'm assuming that Roderick would interfere at Blood and Guts, and uh, you know, this way you could build up to the Mark Briscoe match. So, it should be really, really, really interesting to see how they book that. But, um, yeah, I mean, pretty much a loaded card. You got Athena taking on Queen Aminata. You know, two talented black girls going out there for the ROH title. I think that should be awesome. Both are coming off of great matches at Supercard of Honor. Uh, Billy Starks taking on Red Velvet. Diamante taking on Layla Hirsch. So, you know, the, the women in ROH have really, really been good. Uh, so you've seen a lot of women's matches here. But as long as they deliver, I don't have a problem with it, man. Um... A five-way for the ROH Television Championship. We have Atlantis Jr. taking on Leo Rush, Shane Taylor, Johnny TV, and Kyle Fletcher. You got Wheeler Yuta taking on Lee Moriarty. And then we have a trios match. Dustin Rhodes teaming up with Devon Eriks to take on the Dark Order. So, you know, not a bad card. Like I said time and time again, ROH, it's tough for ROH to be relevant right now. There's definitely a lack of promotion. I, I really don't think a lot of people are going to want to spend money on Honor Club to watch this show. Uh, but time and time again, I, I'll tell you what, th these Tony Khan ROH shows, they deliver every single time. I mean, there hasn't been one time where they've just been, you know, subpar or below expectations. They, they've all been really, really exceeding expectations type of shows. So, uh, but hey, you know. It's tough to get excited about ROH in this climate. There's more than enough WWE and AEW stuff on television right now. It's almost like it's at the point right now where, you know, maybe you want to see him sell the company. It would be cool to see Gabe, you know, run ROH. But at the same time, you got TNA, you got GCW. Do you really need Ring of Honor? Um, but hey, there's a lot of good names here that, that don't normally get on TV. So it's great exposure for them. You know, the Mark briscoe Roger Strong matchup. I love it, man. I, th I think this is great for old school fans. You know, Roderick has a great legacy with the Briscoes. Obviously, he ended the the two falls in a row streak where, you know, the Briscoes continuously kept winning, um, you know, two out of three falls matches and never losing a fall. It was Roderick that actually ended that streak. So you got a little bit of history there. Plus, you know, Roderick has had some of his best matches with Jay Briscoe. I mean, some people think Jay Briscoe's best singles matches were with Roderick Strong. They stole the show at the Flair show, Stallone and Profiling. They also had, you know, what a lot of people think is Jay Briscoe's best match, Only the Strong Survive. You know, that 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 show, if you want to if you want to go back and look at one time period where you could actually make the argument for Delirious before Sinclair took over, it would be like that that stretch from 2010 to 2011. And, uh, you know, that show, that's one of the best 
you know, arguments for that, that case as delirious as a good booker without the Sinclair umbrella. So yeah, we'll move on to blood and guts. So definitely check out death before dishonor. Uh, what day is it? Is it on Sunday? It makes sense for this to be on Sunday. So it's not competing with, Oh fuck. It's on, it's on Friday. Shit. Okay. So this is on July 26th. So by the time you see this video, I guess it'll be on tonight. So definitely check it out. This is uh, death before dishonor. We'll move on to blood and guts. Okay. Next up, we're moving on to blood and guts. 2024 so yeah just another you know great dynamite I, I i definitely think each and every dynamite in the month of july i, I think definitely offered something uh must see so thumbs up to AEW. i think it's been a great year for them if, if i were to pick one promotion wwe aew in 2024 i think they've both been good but if you're going to ask me I, I think aew i'm going to give them the nod so um it's not to take away anything from WWE this year, but hey, on to uh, the show. We got Chris Jericho defending the FTW title against Minoru Suzuki uh, to open up blood and guts. I, I thought this was a lot of fun. I mean, the Jericho haters are still going to hate this match, but I, I thought it was cool. You know, Suzuki and Jericho at this stage, it, it felt like they were evenly matched in terms of experience and age and you know jericho's got ties to uh you know wrestling in japan so i think it made all the sense in the world i, I can't remember if this is the first time they locked up together i think it might have been um but hey man they chopped the shit out of each other i mean the fans were actually chanting please don't stop chopping or please please uh keep chop i, I can't remember what the chant was it was something to do with chops um but yeah, Jericho was actually bleeding from the chops, and uh, it was a pretty hard-hitting match, man. I actually enjoyed it, and uh, you know, Jericho was able to stay away from the pile driver and hit the Judas effect. Suzuki actually hits the pile driver after he already loses, but Jericho goes over Minoru Suzuki. I, I got to say, this is this has got to be one of Jericho's best matches of the year, and what's been uh, the most highly scrutinized, you know, year of his career so far. So, uh, thumbs up to Jericho there. Um, that was the first match of the night, but I, I want to talk about a couple of segments. So, so to open, actually open up the show, you actually have MJF uh, cut a promo. He actually throws the international championship in the trash and uh, attempts to rechristen it as a United States-based uh, championship, basically burying uh, you know wrestling from around the world, saying that you know the only wrestling that matters is the one in the United States. And but then he starts uh, trashing Nashville. They're actually in Nashville. Then he says the only place in the world that matters is uh, Long Island. So it, it's a great promo. Osprey actually had his tires slashed uh, by MJF. Osprey comes out and uh, basically says that uh, you know MJF had uh, you know to find the dynamite diamond behind this small little dick. And, uh, you know, use it to cheat. So Osprey's going to get a rematch at all in. So beautiful stuff here. Um, looks like we're going to get Osprey and MJF. The match was so good that they got to have a rematch at all in. Uh, so Pac is actually the number one contender. So it's just kind of, you know, it should be interesting it, interesting to see how Pac, uh, you know, cashes in that title shot. I mean, is it going to be a triple threat match? Highly unlikely. I think that's the, uh, the wrong decision. Uh, you know, Pac is most likely going to get a shot at, um, you know, the winner possibly at All Out. I, I would not mind seeing Osprey and Pac, you know, at All Out. I don't think that's a bad idea at, at, at all. Also, you had a, a, an incredible uh, segment with uh, Brian Danielson doing an interview with Renee. Uh, basically talking about the injuries and, you know, th th talking about Bree and, you know, winding it down and, you know, the next surgery and, you know, does he go all in or all out in terms of, uh, you know, trying to pace himself? Um, and then, yeah, I loved it, man, because, you know, Brian Danielson, you know, I, I just want to see him, you know, come with that mentality when he when he faced Kenta. When he said, you know, Kenta, to beat me, you're going to have to kill me because tonight I'm building my legacy. You know, that that promo that he cut outside of Madison Square Garden. I, I still love that promo. And, and, you know, even even the Brian Danderson against Austin Aries from Testing the Limit when, you know, they're chanting, please don't die. And he screams, I don't give a fuck if I die. Like, I, I don't know. Selfishly, I want to see that Brian Danderson at all in. You know, th this is this is definitely Danderson's biggest match. Uh, you know, since WrestleMania 30, uh, I think you could argue. So, um, you know, and then Jared actually cuts him off and basically says, you know, Brian, you're talking like you got one foot out the door. And, you know, basically Jared uh, endorses Danielson, you know, tells him that he's proud of him, but he wants to see him, you know, either, either you're all in or you're not. And, uh, you know, Danielson has a moment of clarity. 
and uh, tells Renee, you know, I think he's right. I got to think about it. And uh, so great segment there. Um, you know, you really haven't gotten a lot of interaction between Jarrett, you know, and Danielson over the years. Um, really, the only thing I can think of is that Ring of Homicide match against Delirious, where the fans are actually chanting TNA reject to Danielson. And he basically says, you know, TNA didn't reject me. I rejected TNA. I mean, that's really it. I mean, I don't really know if there's a lot there between Jarrett and, and Danielson. I'm, I'm sure looking back on it, you know, Jarrett, you know, wishes he had Danielson in TNA. Uh, but next up, you actually have Britt Baker actually uh, defeat. Hikaru Shida. So they have a lot of history together. That's who Britt actually won the AEW championship from. So they show, you know, highlights of their previous matches. They still have good chemistry. I thought this was good while it lasted. You know, you know what to expect here. They're, they're going to build up Britt. She wins by submission over Shida. And, uh, you know, DMD comes out with a surprise. I think her name was actually Camille or Camilla or Camille. Um, huge free agent. She's actually with. Um, you know, Mercedes Monet. So Mercedes um, is still denying Britt the title shot at, at all in. But, you know, I, I still think Mercedes and Britt is um, is definitely the right choice for all in. But, you know, we'll see what happens there. Next will be actually have Pac actually defeating Boulder. Uh, this is an enhancement match for Pac, just to kind of remind everybody that he's, uh, you know, in the mix, you know, for the international championship. You know, they, they kind of sold it like whether it's Osprey or MJF, you know, Pac is definitely the number one contender. So we'll see what happens there. Next up, we actually have Mariah May actually taking on Kate Land. Uh, Alexis, oh, that's pretty cool that they act because I, I used to kind of, you know, poke fun at the name Caitlyn with with Kate Land. So I think that's her real name, Kate Land Alexis. But this is just an enhancement match. Mariah May goes over. Uh, she's cutting a promo on Tony Storm. It looks like Tony Storm is about to come out with her music. Then she starts laughing, kind of doing the HPK thing in Montreal. And then uh, you know Tony Storm comes from behind, dressed up in a hoodie. So we got a good you know confrontation between Mariah and Tony Storm with the officials breaking it up. So it was cool. It was cool for what it was. Uh, but we're gonna move on to blood and guts, man. We got Team AEW. Uh, they cut a good promo before the match, uh, you know, started. You saw a lot of tension between Darby and Swerve. So they planted the seeds for that, possibly at Grand Slam, possibly at Wrestle Dream. You know, we'll see what happens there. Um, you know, Mark Briscoe, once again, it's a shame that, you know, probably not a lot of people go to order Death Before Dishonor because Mark Briscoe is cutting some of the best promos of his career. Um, so, yeah, man, I mean, so Team AEW, Swerve, Mark Briscoe, Darby, um, and the acclaimed, you know, taking on the elite of uh, the Young Bucks, Okada, uh, the scapegoat, Jack Perry, and then Hangman, Adam Page. The booking of Page is a little bit weird here. Um, but, yeah, I thought it was good. I, I thought the Blood and Guts match delivered. I, I could be wrong here, but from what I've seen, I would say this is the best Blood and Guts. I thought this is must-see TV. You know, this is, uh, you know, this is this is the advantage of having wrestling on television and not on Honor Club. If, if you're scrambling across the channels and, and you see something like this on TV and you've never seen it before, there's no way you cannot enjoy this. I mean, holy shit. I mean, this was just great. Great booking, great atmosphere. I, I thought you had a, a out of the box ending. I didn't mind the ending at all. It's always tough to end these uh, War Games matches. But yeah, I thought AEW really delivered on the War Games blood and guts match here i mean I, th I thought it was beautiful stuff okay so they start off with darby and uh the scapegoat jack perry i i think i think this was the logical way to start it really darby was the mvp in this match i mean he just did some you know incredible stuff i mean you name it i, I thought the ending with the gasoline was cool um you know the coffin drop from the top of the cage through the tables was was really really cool the dialogue between him and matt jackson to end this thing uh, was pretty awesome. Uh, you know, Mark Briscoe had a, a, a great show, and I thought he got a great pop. And, you know, they really made him look strong heading into Death Before Dishonor. You did not see Roderick get involved here. So they didn't really do a lot of promotion for Death Before Dishonor or setting up any of those matches, which which is good. You know, this is all in season. You know, AEW's got, you know, so many television shows. So I, I could definitely understand it. You don't want to take away from you know, Blood and Guts. Last year, they totally used Blood and Guts to set up, uh, you know, was it was it Pac and Claudio? Um, you know, I, I think Max and, and Anthony Bowens, you know, uh, you know, were, were great, man. There were some beautiful, you know, sandwich barbed wire spots where they used the, the board with the barbed wire, the sandwich guys. Um, 
you know, Max took a, a, some really, really cool super kicks with, with the tacks in his jaw. So they, they did some crazy stuff out there. I think, I, I think Okada was okay. They, they used Okada pretty cool. I mean, they, they did the, uh, uh, you know, the, the assisted drop kick with Okada actually, did, uh, you know, drop kicking the chair into, I, th- I think it was, I think it was Mark Briscoe. Uh, but yeah, Okada had a really, really cool middle finger spot with uh, Swerve and then Swerve uh, staple gun Okada's middle finger. So, so when Swerve finally came out, um, you know, Hangman didn't come out at first and he didn't come out until, you know, after Swerve came out. And then they did the big beat down on Swerve. I think they handcuffed Swerve. Uh, they said if Hangman doesn't get into the ring, he gets fired. So that was ordered by the Young Bucks. So, yeah, the booking of Hangman was pretty weird. But in terms of the stuff between Hangman and Swerve, you finally got to see them, um, you know, reunite their feud. I thought their chemistry was was incredible. They actually used Jarrett to actually come out in Nashville uh, to uncuff um you know, swerve. So, you know, Jared got a great reaction. There was double J chance. I don't know if anybody heard it, but, uh, but yeah, man, I, I mean, the, the, what, when swerve is in the ring, they did some really, really cool stuff. You know, the, the, the counter to the buckshot lariat from swerve was incredible. And then, you know, the, the whole elite is trying to staple gun, uh, swerve. And then, they, and then he no sells it. So I, I, I thought, you know, they did some great stuff with swerve. They really made him look strong and, uh, just, just some awesome, you know, you know, table, spots at the end with mark doing elbow drops through tables and you know that the, you know darby's coffin drop came out great and then darby's like you know we got to get the party started and uh you know they teased you know you know setting jack perry on fire they actually handcuffed jack perry almost like he's getting crucified to the cage and uh you know, Matt Jackson ultimately, you know, quits. He, and then they grant Darby the uh, the TNT title shot at All In. So it's going to be Darby versus Jack Perry at All In. So hopefully this year is a much better experience for uh, the scapegoat Jack Perry at All In. But yeah, I mean, I, I think the match was good. I, I think it was great. I, I, I thought you had some, uh, you know, incredible action here. Uh, there's there's no doubt about it. I mean, I, I have to go back and rewatch all of them. But, but from my memory... I think this is possibly, you know, the most satisfying blood and guts match, you know, I, I think they've had so far. So, yeah, definitely a thumbs up there. Um, in, in terms of death before dishonor, I'm actually going to pass on the show. Um, you know, but if anyone gets a chance to see it, you, I think you could order it on Honor Club. You know, same deal, only $9.99. Uh, they add, just want to touch on some of the stuff that they added. So w- what looks really, really cool here, you're going to get Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, the Undisputed Kingdom, taking on the conglomeration of Kyle O'Reilly and Tamohiro Ishii. So that's not a bad match. You know, that's definitely, you know, that definitely elevates the, you know, status of the show for me. I, I think that looks really cool. Commander taking on the Beast Mortos. Uh, was also added what else was added here so so yeah man i mean i think it looks good i I definitely wanted to order this um i just got a new card in the mail my my original card just expired it came in the mail um you know i don't know i'm just not in the mood to you know link the honor club thing to a bank account you know i would have loved to have uh you know used a prepaid you know credit card for this show i just don't have enough money on it um so yeah i mean i'm not gonna you know jump over hoops or, or loops to watch this show uh but if you get the chance to see it you know definitely see it i, I think mark briscoe and Roderick strong i think that's a hell of an attractive main event i think the show will be good no matter what but for as good as it is it's not going to change the perception of ring of honor's relevancy and uh, you know i might talk more about ring of honor um you know I, i'm going to definitely review the race to the top tournament that'll be coming at the end of july um but i might you know, touch on some stuff about Gabe. You know, I, I just watched the Gabe and Kevin Owens, you know, shoot interview, which is on YouTube. And it, it kind of like made me feel depressed uh, a little bit. And uh, so definitely want to follow up on that. And, uh, you know, this whole thing with the NBA, you know, not getting um, n- not, you know, kind of ending the relationship with Warner Brother Discovery and, and TNT, to be exact. You know, hopefully, you know, maybe it'll open the door up for AEW, you know, maybe just do some more stuff. Maybe it does open the door for a, a television deal, you know, with ROH. You know, I've been on record saying I don't really want ROH to be on TV, but I don't know. Do you really think this Honor Club thing is really working? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't, there's really not much to say about it. Look, it's Death Before Dishonor, it's on tonight. If, if there's a lot of, I'm sure there's not a lot of interest with some people. If, if you do get the chance to see it. I really think Mark Briscoe and Roderick, 
is a hell of a match. I don't think the card looks bad at all. There's going to be some really good women's matches on it. Athena and Queen Amanada. I think that looks really, really good. So if you get a chance to see it, you know, review it. And, um, you know, try to, you know, try to help ROH out, man. Because uh, I, I don't want to see the company die. I still love the company. Uh, I love the old school stuff. I think it's it's still like my favorite stuff to talk about, even though I know it's not that relevant. But um, just looking at the all-in card right here, you know, it looks pretty damn cool. cool. You know, you got, obviously you got Tony Storm and Mariah May, MJF and Will Ospreay, the, the rematch to the classic that they just had. You know, Jack Perry and Darby is going to be great no matter how you look at it. That's definitely going to be Jack Perry's biggest match of his career. Mercedes and Britt Baker. Um, you know, say what you want about Mercedes. Say what you want to about Britt. These are two attractive females that, you know, have, definitely have a lot to prove. I think, that, you know, they're both coming back from major injuries. And, you know, we'll see what happens there. Swerve and Brian Danielson. I would definitely love to see Brian, you know, win this match. And, um, you know, I, I definitely think you could do a rematch at Wrestle Dream in Washington. I think that makes all the sense in the world. Maybe you could have Darby involved in a triple threat. So you get, you know, three Washington boys in the main event of Wrestle Dream in the, in the, in the state of Washington. I, I could definitely see that happening. But, yeah, man, I, I mean, God, it'd be great for Danielson to win the belt. And I, I definitely think he'll stay in AEW. I know they mentioned the contract situation, and his contract is going to expire on August 1st. But, you know, Danielson should not go back to the WWE. H him being with AEW so far, it's it's been awesome. I just wish, you know, we could kind of, you know, clean up this injury thing. I just hope he stays healthy. And, you know, you would just like to see Danielson, um, you know, just have maybe just one one last, you know, run as champion. And then he could be a part-timer. Maybe he could just show up, you know, every once in, a, once in a while for the big shows, whether it be Revolution, Forbidden Door, or, you know, All In, you know, maybe Full Gear. You know, I, I, I don't mind Danielson being a part-timer, but I just think it would be cool if he could just have one last, you know, title run, I think ending the show in Wembley with Danielson as champion, you know, maybe Nigel could get into the ring and, you know, you could have the, the code of honor between Brian and Nigel or, you know, something, man. I, I would def definitely be looking forward to that. But, uh, but yeah, man, Swerve and Danielson, uh, can't argue with it. I'm definitely looking forward to All In. Uh, I think I definitely think the show is, you know, it, it's become the event of the summer. Um, I just don't like the spot that where SummerSlam is right now. I don't think the SummerSlam card, you know, screams must see. But, you know, you just hope that it's better than expected. It's, it's pretty much all I can really say about it. So, yeah, man, support Ring of Honor. Support Death Before Dishonor. You know, if you want to support the company, review it. And, you know, I guarantee you it'll be a good show no matter what. It's really not about whether it's good or not. It's just what we're really you know, impress me is, you know, the buzz it creates. And I'm just not that confident that it's going to create a lot of buzz. But hey, man, I'm going to end it right there. That's uh, an incredible month of AEW. I think every single Dynamite was worth talking about from Beach Break to the Owen Finals to, um, you know, Dynamite 250 to Blood and Guts. You, you, you got some incredible stuff on each and every show. Uh, so, yeah.